Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you decided to join us today. Today we have a special program for you, and we want you to stick around and see what that is, okay? Boy, is it hot outside or what? I have my water bottle right here, and I'm drinking. See how big my water bottle, water bottle is? It's big. I hope, hopefully, you guys are drinking some water too. Okay, so make sure that you drink a lot of water, plenty of water, because it's hot. If you guys go outside, make sure you, you're always with mom and dad and drinking a lot of water. You don't want to have a heat stroke or dehydrate yourself on this heat. Okay, so I have my water bottle. We're going to be playing something with an empty water bottle later in the program, and I want you guys to do that at home too, or at least try to do it at home, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay. Last week we had Johnny here. Johnny was great. I watched the video and I loved it. I loved the way he did Kids Connection. And he's going to be doing more Kids Connection in the future. Not only Johnny, but we have all other characters that are going to make their appearance in Kids Connection program. And hopefully you guys like them too. Okay? Let us know how you like Johnny. And if you want to have Kid come out and visit you. By the way, Kid was going to make some visits last week but it was so hot and we didn't want to have kid outside on the sun so we asked those families to hang tight we're gonna wait until it cools down a little bit more and we'll have kid come out and visit them and if you want to visit from kid it's a social distance everyone from the sidewalk you just email us have mom or dad email us bdkidsconnection at gmail.com we'll schedule an appointment and ha I'll drive kid to have him come out and visit you at your house and say hello from a distance, okay? Let's get our program started singing our song of the day and we'll see how this is connected to our program today. Let's sing it together.
Now I invite you to bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this hot summer day. We ask your blessings over this program. Bless each boy and girl who are watching us right now, wherever they are. Bless them, be with them, and help us get connected with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excellent. Do you guys, have you guys seen anybody fight, argue? Have you? Have you seen anybody hit each other? Oh no! Sometimes there are some people that are mean and they hit each other. No, 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 no. We don't do that here in Kids Connection. Here in Kids Connection, it's all about love. But in our missionary story today, we're going to hear a story about a boy. A boy who someone hit him. And you'll see what happened after that person hit him. What did he do? Let's watch our missionary story. Emmanuel wanted to annoy 13-year-old Aggie during a break between French and physics classes at the Seventh-day Adventist School in Libreville, Gabon. He knew that Aggie had a short temper, so he started saying mean things. Annoyed, Aggie immediately slapped the boy on the cheek. Emmanuel didn't like being slapped, and he slapped Aggie back. Now Aggie was furious. He punched Emmanuel. Children crowded around the fighting boys. Don't stop, they yelled. Let them fight. A teacher's assistant came running, causing the children to scatter to their seats. He pulled them apart. Why are you fighting? He was mean to me, Aggie said. He hit me, Emmanuel said. You shouldn't fight. Fighting is for animals. Apologize. As punishment, the boys had to spend two hours away from the other children, quietly thinking about what they had done. It was a long two hours. After some time, Aggie whispered to Emmanuel, Why were you mean to me? I was only joking, Emmanuel whispered back. Aggie wished that he hadn't lost his temper. That summer, Grandfather sent Aggie to a Pathfinder campout. Aggie's Bible teacher also went to the campout, and he spoke for morning and evening worship. At the end of the three-week campout, he asked whether any children wanted to give their hearts to Jesus. He told them how Jesus could change their hearts. Instead of anger, he could give them peace and love. When Aggie heard that, he remembered his short temper. He remembered how his temper led to fights and made his parents unhappy. He wanted to change and he prayed, Lord, I want to follow you. Then Aggie stood up and went to the front. People were surprised to see him standing. His Bible teacher was happy that he wanted to be baptized. After baptism, when Aggie came out of the river, he felt the same as before. He thought maybe something miraculous would have happened, but everything still seemed normal. But as the days passed, he noticed that he no longer enjoyed many things of the past. His friends noticed that he wasn't easily angered like before. Just the other day, Emmanuel brought some cakes to sell in class, and Aggie didn't want to buy one. I don't want to buy anything today, he said. I'm not feeling well. Come on, buy one, Emmanuel said. No, I can't, Aggie said. Emmanuel's face twisted in anger and he slapped Aggie. But Aggie didn't feel angry at all, and he quietly walked away. He was so grateful that with Jesus' help, his days of having a short temper were over. Jesus was changing his heart. In 2017, part of the 13th Sabbath offering helped construct a high school for 280 students in Aggie's hometown of Libreville, Gabon. Thank you for helping change lives through the 13 Sabbath offering. It makes a big difference. I am so happy that he got to know Jesus and how Jesus transformed him in his heart. And he's now a new person. Hopefully, we can learn from this story and take that as an example that whenever someone does something mean to us, how do we react to those things? Let's keep them in prayer and also continue to support with our offering as missionaries are helping people to get to know Jesus in other areas of the world. Thank you for your support. <sighs> okay, it's hot. Is it hot where you are? Why well, it's hot out here. Let me drink some water. Mmm. 
It is nice and cool. Look how big my water bottle is. And I drink all this water because I need to get and to be hydrated, okay? Now what I want you guys to do, go to the kitchen, go to your living room, um, wherever you have a water bottle, okay? I'm gonna use this one because this is the one I have with me now. Mm. This is good water. I love cold water. It's refreshing. If you guys have a clear water bottle, that's fine. If you have one of the Kids Connection water bottle that you have there from the previous, remember when we were here in Kids Connection, go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna do something fun with you guys now. So I'm gonna do something fun with you guys today, okay? So here is my desk and I'm gonna show you something and I want you guys to try this at home too. First, I want you to get an empty water bottle, okay? Completely empty this one. I just finished drinking the water, okay? Then you're gonna grab two books or two boxes or whatever you can put it on one side and the other. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use these uh, two water bottles here, okay? And I'm gonna remove the cap of the water bottle, one there and the other one here. So now I have, and let's pretend that these two water bottles, okay, Kids Connection, are like books or you can put them sideways like this, but I want you guys to put them away and I want you to grab a piece of paper, okay? And put the water bottles or put the boxes or the books at a distance from those two platforms, okay? Just like this. So you have one on this side and one on this side. It could be a little bit lower too. I'm gonna use this one because it's just easier for you to see what we're, what we're doing, okay? So here I have two water bottles. They're flat on top. And you are welcome to pause the video and go get your water bottle, go get your books or go get your boxes and set up and get a sheet of paper like this one. This one is, is the one that I, we use here in Kids Connection, okay? It doesn't matter which sheet you use as long as it's one sheet of paper, okay? Now, what I want you guys to do is to put the piece of paper over the two platforms that you have. Here's one platform and here is another one, either book or boxes. Now, I want you to grab the empty water bottle that you have and try to put that water bottle on that paper bridge that you just built, okay? That you just put over. And I wanna see, I wanna see if the water bottle stands on top of the bridge. Let's see if this one stands. Oops, it did not stand. Hmm, it didn't stand, it didn't stay there. I guess it's not strong enough. Let's try it again. Piece of paper, bridge, paper, and nope, it didn't. My question to you is, are you able to make the water bottle stand on the bridge without falling? Can you do it? How can you make the water bottle empty stand on top of this paper bridge? Do you think it's possible? If you need to pause this video, pause it and try a couple times and see what can you do to make this what you cannot put another book on, on top. You just have to stand that water bottle on the piece of, of paper, on the piece of paper only, okay? How can we do this? How? Dun, dun, dun. I will show you, but pause the video, try it, and then come back and watch how it's done, okay? All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try a little bit, and now you're playing the video again. I'm gonna show you how this is possible. Are you ready? You grab the piece of paper, just like this, and you will fold, and you will make one fold that is about a half inch long, or maybe a quarter of an inch. So it folds like this, okay? And then you fold that backwards again. And then you turn it around and you fold it, just like you're building a fan, remember? 
You remember how to, how to make a fan? Okay, and then you do it again on this side. Oops, I just lost my water bottle. I'll get in a second, okay? So you fold it this way and then you fold it again, but you fold it that way and you keep turning and you keep, keep folding just like you do it. You make a, you build a fan, okay? And now I have a little, a little kids connection fan. You see that? Okay. Oh, this feels good. Yes, it feels good. Okay. Now give me one second. Let me get the water bottle. Here we go. Got it. So now I'm going to show you how you can actually make the water bottle stand between the two platforms with one piece of paper that is now folded in like an accordion. Okay. Like this. So you put that accordion there, piece of paper. It's still the piece of paper. Okay. See that? The accordion. You put that there. And now you put the water bottle on top of that piece of paper. And voila! I just made a water bottle stand on a paper bridge. Isn't it cool? Look at this. When you fold it, when you fold the paper into an accordion shape, it supported. Oops, the wind just blew it away. It supported the, the water bottle across the bridge. And, and it doesn't fall. Ha, this is amazing. It's still a piece of paper. And we were able to make that piece of that water bottle stand between the bridges on a bridge of paper. But we had to do something to that piece of paper. I couldn't have the piece of paper straight. I had to fold the piece of paper and I had to change the way the piece of paper was to make it stronger so the bridge would support the water bottle. It could have not happened without changing something to the way that the, the paper was. It could not support if it was just a piece of paper. But once you make that change, that's that gives the support and we were able to make a stand. Now you know, do something fun. Show your friends, show your grandma, your grandpa. Ask them if they know how to do it and then you show them how to do it. So now I'm gonna take this away and I'll tell you what this has to do with our, with our program for today. So in today's story, at our lesson and with our teacher, we are going to learn about a people, the Thessalonians, and what they were facing, the struggle and the difficulties they were facing. Just like when we had the piece of paper and we were trying to make the water bottle stand in the middle of that piece of paper. And what, how hard was it? They were facing some difficult times and they didn't know how to do something. They didn't know how to walk. They didn't know how to keep going. But we're also going to learn how a letter that was sent to them helped them to see and how they were able to continue to walk as, as that was the instructions on how a God that was a loving God was able to help them. Not only that, but we will also hear about this God and how this God can actually help us today in our difficult times. Sometimes when we see a problem that is too hard and we don't know how to do it, like a piece of paper, we didn't know how to build that bridge and to, we didn't know how to make the, the, the water bottle stand on that piece of paper. We had to do something to the paper to make it stand. The same way God can help us when we don't know, God can help us and change the way we're doing things and by His love, He can help us. And 
those, the story that we're here, we're here today can, we're here, can even help us uh, on, now, on our days today, as long as we keep listening to the voice of God. Now I invite you to stand up, get ready, let's sing our song of the day together to close our Kids Connection program. All right, that was a fun song. I always enjoy singing all the songs here at Kids Connection, and hopefully you guys enjoy singing them at home too with mom and dad. Tell your friends about Kids Connection and invite them to come and watch. Now let's bow our heads so we can close our Kids Connection program. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you are our God. Thank you because of the Bible stories that we hear. And today's story, I ask that you help the kids see how you love us and how you can help us and we can count on you. And sometimes there are some changes in life and life is difficult, but we know that you can help us pull it through. We ask that you keep protecting all the boys and girls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Now, let me tell you a couple of things that are happening. Well, number one. Thank you guys for being a part of our program last week. Remember, we were in a church in a Zoom meeting and a Zoom worship where we saw all the pastors and we saw Johnny. Some of you had a chance to join that Zoom worship and be a part with Johnny and even talk to Johnny, asking some questions and answering some questions. We are going to have another worship live on Zoom coming up 
next month. And this is going to be a regular thing for our church. So get ready. We'll let you know when that comes so you guys can join us on Zoom and either see Johnny or maybe see Julia or see, or see myself or see someone else participating and being a part of that program as well. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to send us an email. Let us know if it's your birthday. We have school coming up starting this week. Some of you already started homeschool last week. I saw pictures. Well, I hope that this year is a year full of success on your school and you get all your homework and you get all your schoolwork accomplishments and you do them all. And if you guys are doing the on, uh, at home, in-home uh, online school, Starting this week, I pray that God protects you, God be with you, and as you grow and as you learn, may this be an experience that you'll never forget. I pray for your safety, and I will see you guys next week on another Kids Connection program. Stick around for your Kids Connection, excuse me, for your Sabbath school class, classroom story, which is come, comes up by your teacher. Thank you for being a part and for joining us today. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Have a great afternoon. Stay cool, hydrated, drink a lot of water. And don't forget to play the game of the water bottle and the bridge with your mom and dad or someone else. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hi, kids. Good morning. Welcome to our Kids Connection. I'm glad you're joining us this morning. I'm really happy to see you today. It's been a great week. We're almost at the end of August. And it's just wonderful to see you here. Do you know how long we have been doing these online videos? It has been over probably three or four months now. It was March, April, May, June, July, five months already, almost six. Wow. And you know what? Thank you for coming back every Sabbath to see our videos. I would like, I have not heard about, about anyone. I would love to hear about someone that has been watching our videos and has liked them and is just coming back every Sabbath. I want to know who you are. Uh, and this morning, I'm going to ask you, can you stretch a little bit? Because I know you were in Kids Connection and probably you have been sitting for, I don't know, 20 minutes. So why don't you stand up, stretch a little bit, get a glass of water, jump a little bit, get your wiggles out, get your wiggles out. And then let's come back, have a seat, get ready, take a deep breath. And after we've taken a deep breath. It's time to pray. Let's pray. Our dear God, thank you because you're a wonderful God, a God that loves us so much and that gives us grace every day. Thank you, God, and we can't wait to meet with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I'm very excited today because I get to spend one more Saturday with you guys. And I'm going to ask you to open up your Bibles. Could you take out your Bibles? Go and guess what is the chapter we're studying today? We're doing Thessalonians again. Remember, it has been a while that we have been studying Thessalonians. So we're going to continue. But this time, we're going to study the second book of Thessalonians. It's almost at the end of the New Testament. And we have 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. So a brief description again, Thessalonians was a very big city. It was big for economy. People would trade a lot of things that would pass through. So it was a very huge city and people were getting to know Jesus. Jesus is not um, on earth anymore, but the disciples are still there. And Paul is the one that continues preaching um, to the people in Thessalonians. So with that reference, now let's get into our lesson for today. Our lesson for today, it's about 2 Thessalonians, and we're going to start with chapter 1. This is something very interesting. So do you think that the people of Thessalonians were going through a harsh time? I'm going to read you a little phrase, and I want you to tell me if you think you know what was going on. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 1 it starts Paul Silas and Timothy to the church of Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ if your version is different it's because I'm reading from the New International Bible um, so that is how they started their um, letters back there 
Paul, Silas, and Timothy were trying to communicate with the church in Thessalonians. And it continues giving thanks and giving praise. And I want to go and jump. You can later on read the verses. But I want you to jump all the way to verse 6. And I think that's the key to know what was going on. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. What do you think the message was about? Hmm, I wonder what could be the situation in Thessalonians that Paul had to write this. What are your thoughts? Correct. There were a lot of things going on. And you know what I can see there? What I was able to, to understand is that Thessalonian people were being pushed by others. They were being mistreated. They were probably being abused. They were probably being um, threatened, killed, beaten because they followed Jesus. Well, of course, I found out a lot of those things because I have already read the whole chapter. So I'm just giving you a preview. But you know, in this verse particularly, it's saying God is just. What does it mean? To be just and I am going to reference you to the dictionary because I really want to understand what does the word just mean so the word just by definition it says that it's an adjective so it's something that it's giving you a description of a person right it could be based on or behaving according to what is morally right and fair so to be just it's to be morally correct and fair at the same time so it's giving us a description of god that god is not going to do something unless it's not morally correct and fair at the same time <gasps> Wow, I am just amazed and happy to hear that I follow a God that does not act on feelings. It's going to make a decision based on what is morally correct and also fair. I love that. Okay, so let's go back to uh, 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, that was verse 6. And let's continue. Verse 7. And give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. Wow, I can't wait for that time to come. You know, sometimes we want God to enforce his justice right now. You know, if someone is not treating me right, if someone is not fair, I want God to show his power right now. But lessons ago, we had studied that we do not understand why sometimes uh, bad things happen to good people. But in God's grace, he sometimes let us go through situations not because of us, but the people who are harming us may receive also grace and repent. You might have your own approach or opinion about it. That is what I believe. But you know what? At the end, Jesus wins. And I've heard that phrase over and over again. And every time I hear it, I love it. And that's why I'm, I'm repeating it this morning. Because it says on verse 7 that when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Anyone who suffers in the name of Jesus will be rewarded. It could seem unfair, 
But remember, at the end, Jesus wins. So now I'm going to refer you to another verse that I want you to take a look at. 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, 2. Okay, so let's let's read verse uh, 2. Uh, concern, I'm sorry, let's go, let's go back to uh, verse 1. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to come easily and settle all alarm by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word or by mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. We do not know when God will come. Although I would love to know when Jesus comes. I would love to know if my eyes are going to be seeing that or if I'm going to be the part that's going to be resurrected. I don't know when is Jesus going to come. But I would love to be alive when that happens. So let's jump all the way to verse 16. Verse 16. Paul is giving him the last words of encouragement. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and straighten you in every good deed and word. He's saying, you know, even though you're going through some rough times, hold on in there. Hang on to life. Continue being pressured because at the end, God wins. And if you were mistreated, if you were bitten, if you were killed, if you were anything on Jesus' name's sake, Jesus will win at the end. And that is what he wants to give you today. Eternal life. If you accept him in your heart, you will live forever in God's kingdom. So, I have prepared a little thing for you. This is very easy and some and I'm sure you have done it a lot of times. So, we're going to I have a, here a square a square paper. I want you to fold it in half like this. It could be a uh, a rectangle square like this and then you fold it in half. Once after you have the square, you transform it into a rectangle. And then you want to do the opposite side, same thing. And you're going to have it here. Then you're going to have a little center in the paper. So right here. So all the corners need to go to the center. Okay? So all of them are going to go to the center. Take your time, don't worry. You can pause the video and you can continue at any time. Once you have the square, you're gonna do the same thing, but on the other side. You wanna put this tip to the center. Okay. Once you have done that, you're going to flip it over and it's going to be like this. You're going to fold it in half and then the other way in half. And then once you have it in half, you're going to put your fingers through here, through these little holes. And on the other side, these ones are kind of little for me. But, um, you're going to do this on the other side and then you're going to push them inside so they can be joined and you're going to have this. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to find verses that you remember. Probably we have, you have heard them through Sabbath school. Probably you can use the one for today. How do I know that God will bring justice to earth? So, you can write a verse here. You could write first this, uh, Second Thessalonians. Well, we can have, have, write both of them. First Thessalonians, 
um, Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. And I have one of them here. And that tells me that God is just. Can you think about another verse that it says that God is just? What about if we go to Matthew? Let's see. Could you find another verse in Matthew? I want to think that there is a verse in Matthew that it talks about justice. Hmm, let's see. Do you know which verse I'm talking about? Hmm. Could it be one of the Beatitudes? <gasps> oh, so you do know what we're talking about. So, you can find the Beatitudes in Luke 6, 20 to 23. And I'm sure after that, you can find many others. In Matthew, you can also uh, find some others. And they're going to be in Matthew 5. And I'm just giving you a lot of different hints to on where to look. Um... Let's see. Matthew 5, 10 says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you. Rejoice, glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. All those God will bring justice. And that is something amazing we can always trust in. So this week, anytime you want to remember, if you're going through some difficult times, if you seem that life is not fair, remember that God has given us a promise. One day he will come. Because he will come. Don't forget about that. He will come. It could, my grandparents believed that Jesus was coming. My parents believed that Jesus was coming. I believe that Jesus was coming. And now my kids believe Jesus is coming. You know, all those generations, my grandparents are not alive anymore. But when they passed away, they knew in their hearts that no matter how long it would take, God will come. I don't know if I'm going to be alive, but God will come. And when he does, justice will reign on this earth. I'm glad you were able to join us today. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And please share this video with your friends. Share it. Share your thoughts. I would love to hear what you think about the lesson. I would love to hear what you would like to see on the lesson. Please let me know. Um, send a little message you can send me a little message to kids connection you can send it to the vallejo drive uh, church website please go ahead and communicate with us because we would love to hear from you all right let's have a word of prayer our father in heaven thank you because it is such a huge huge blessing to know that you will be with us we know that you will bring justice to this earth and we know that you were going to establish a kingdom that is going to last forever. Thank you for that blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, kids. Thank you for being here with us today. Have a blessed Sabbath. Enjoy the rest of your week and the day with your family.